Hey, hey, everybody. This is Jake West from Comics Academy. I'm joined by my lovely co-host, Melissa White of Nightmare and Soundbox. And, of course, our lovely, lovely guest, Dave Cook of Scotland, here to talk about his book, Killtopia, and also his wonderful artist, Craig Patton, right there. Just want to give a little shout-out to him. Uh, and... This is actually going to Thomas Warren from Twitter, a signed copy. Yeah. Uh, and it, not actually this copy, though, because he's in England. So Dave's going to send him a copy because shipping. So <laughs> I'm going to give this away at some point in the future again. Because yeah. it's so good. So why not? Uh, also, we have a couple of live shows coming up. Uh, just a couple. You can thank Melissa for that. So Saturday, yeah. the 23rd of March at 10 a.m. PST, we have Bob Saley and Charlie Stickney. Yeah. Then 324, Sunday at 10 a.m., because we're masochists, we have Dorfise Jean and Rod Looper. Dorfise, uh, sir. <laughs> sorry, Dorfie. I'm the worst at names. I apologize. Yeah. Okay, and then 4-3 at 12 p.m., we have Dan Panosian. You did it. I'm so excited. I think. Uh, and also... And Liana Kagas, of course. I'm uh, excited, who, yeah. I love Liana. She's so cool. I know. She said Destroy looks like so yeah. amazing. I haven't picked up an issue yet. By Is fall, it out yet? Uh, it no, it's not out yet. I right. think it's not next month. Right. Um, so pre-order it. It's It looks so good. Uh, oh, I'm so excited. Did, Joe did, is Joe uh, Carello is the uh, writer on that one. So, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. and, and we're trying well. to line him up, Joe. If you're listening, if you're watching, if you're uh, watching, uh, Joe, come hang with we us. We miss you. Come, <laughs> come hang with us. Come hang with us. <laughs> so uh, that's the end of the announcements. Uh, we're also oh uh, one thing sorry <laughs> um, actually uh, we do have a giveaway going right now so check it out uh, there's an update video right now three copies of Spencer and Locke signed by uh, oh god Papose uh, it's it's from Action Lab Comics uh, it's it's a really good book uh, it's basically Calvin and Hobbes it's that they grew up in their homicide detectives so check it out. Uh, and then a copy of The Resurrected from Christian Carnouche, because I yeah. said his name right. Um, I did. I'm so proud of you. Anyways, those are all the things. Now we can get started. Hi, Dave. Hey, how are you guys doing? Great. Yeah. Tell, us, tell us about Killtopia. Tell us, tell us about you. Okay, tell so Killtopia is the, I think it's the, yeah, the sixth book we've ever done, I've ever written. Um, and it's basically inspired by my love of... Um, many things actually, but primarily Japanese action video games. Um, you know, in a previous life, I was a video game journalist. Uh, so games are like my first love over comics. I, you know, that's sacrilege to say on a comic show. You're not one of those. As a recovering like video game addict, life, dude, you, I can, I can attest. Mm -hmm. uh, no, I have a lot of. I'm, I'm like both. It's uh, I'm just comics more at the moment <laughs> You're like, but i'll probably stay there because this is pretty pretty rad so why not both why can't you love video why games not both? And both is good why do you have to like compete like love what you love it's 2019 <laughs> because if you say you love one thing more than the other people get mad <laughs> <laughs> Well, so yeah, it's like uh, all the all the comics I've ever written are have been chiefly inspired by video games that I like. So mm -hmm. um, this mm -hmm. one for me was games, you know, like the kind of uh, action game from Japan, which has like a a, a brash swagger. It's kind of like uh, like Bayonetta. Like, Bayonetta is like one of my favorite games ever. So like you know, trash talking, like really weird things, very like, brash, mm -hmm. punky, sort of anarchistic yeah. kind of vibe. And yeah. so I thought, hey, I want to do a comic about that. Yeah, then, almost um, like uh, you're playing Devil May Cry Five right now or something. Love it, love it. Yeah. <laughs> um, so yeah, like that kind of vibe was the very sort of small kernel of the of what Killtopia be became. But mm -hmm. I'm also a big fan of you know Japanese uh, cinema and manga, mm -hmm. anime, uh, more so the old school kind of stuff. You know, Akira, all the kind of classics. Um, so. Basically, Killtopia, uh, as it blossomed, came, became a story about bounty hunters in future Japan. Um, yep. 
And basically, they're all fighting over the world's first sentient robot. Um, you know, the whole city's been taken over by these killer mecha that are transforming the city, and uh, in, they've infected the human race with this nano disease, which means they're being terraformed from the inside out really painfully. Um, yeah. but the world's first sentient mecha crash has the secret um, to curing the disease inside his code, um, mm -hmm. which means everyone's out to get this one robot. Mm -hmm. Although, as luck would have it, he teams up with a rookie bounty hunter called Shinji. And they form an alliance to outrun their uh, attackers and basically try and heal the planet once and for all. Um, yeah. but and the best bromance ever. Uh, yeah. yeah, thanks. It's uh, yeah, it was really important that they they became kind of good friends and they sort of found the common ground. And uh, we needed like that emotional anchor to it make people care about the story, right? You want to see these guys mm -hmm. pull through. And, um, but yeah, I mean, it, it was many years in the making. I mean, I think I started writing it. Uh, it we're talking like thematics, you know, very early mm. sort of ideas. Yeah. Like 2015, something like that. Okay. Um, way, way back. Um, so, uh, yeah, it just sort of grew over time. And, and we, we deliberately took our time with it because we thought, you know, being signed isn't wasn't one of our goals. It still isn't, even though we are signed now. It never you know, everyone has ideas. Congratulations. Yeah, thank you. <laughs> everyone has their idea about what making it means, you know. Um, but yeah. for us, it was, we want to make books. We, if, it, if they make people happy, then we're happy. Yeah. That kind of thing. You know? um, so that's why it took so long to make, just because we were, it had to be the best thing we could possibly try and do. Um, exactly. And yeah. that's what we said for ourselves, you know. We sort of made a pact that uh, me and Craig, you know, that every single page that we put out there has to be the best as good as we think we can make it uh, so yeah. we'll have measure, right you know we're not just going to settle on something if something's not right we're going to redo it rethink it it's why my scripts take so long <laughs> um, yeah. no well okay. i mean that's part of the process right it's just diving in there making sure that every every panel every piece of dialogue really fits with the vision, really goes, and you guys are working together. So that actually brings me to my question is, how do you how do you and, and Craig work in terms of your scripts? Are you full script? Are you like loosey goosey? How, and I assume you guys know each other by now, I would hope. Oh yeah, so it's like, uh, Craig, Craig uh, actually, we worked together in 2015 on my very mm -hmm. first comic. Yeah. He was oh. the cover art for uh, my series Bust, which is uh, my tribute to Mad Max, uh, The Walking Dead, Fallout, you know, post-apocalyptic. Mm -hmm. um, but it's a very different style, you know. It was kind of like a hyper, hyper real kind of style, photogenic. Um, whereas Kiltopia, you know, was more uh, um, Mobius, fr uh, Jeff Darrow, Frank Quietly kind of line art. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, but when it comes to the script, um, I usually... Um, I'm quite bad for not getting a full script to down in a first draft. I'm one of those guys who writes like the first 10 pages and goes, these are great. I'll sleep on it for one night, come back mm -hmm. to it and be like, I hate this now. <laughs> this, oh, is, yeah. this is not, you know, um, so I find it quite hard to actually just get something down in a first draft. I'm mm -hmm. more iterative. I'll get mm -hmm. this far. You know, hey, I'll scrap this much. That far, mm -hmm. scrap it all. And it just, mm -hmm. it evolves over time. But yeah. When I'm, when it usually happens when I'm kind of like getting frustrated with it. Um, I'll send it to Craig and he'll be like, yeah, it's cool. Just fix this bit, move this bit here. And then it's sorted. And I'm like, why didn't I do this sooner? Why didn't yeah. I ask you opinion sooner? So um, I, th I think in that regard, we've become more collaborative more often. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. And also um, I send a script to Craig's brother, Gary, who lives in Japan. So okay. um, oh, okay. does, you know, uh, you know, po uh, he points out things like, oh, mm -hmm. you know, people in Japan wouldn't do this that way, or they wouldn't, this this kind of thing wouldn't exist how you've, you've written it. Yeah. Um, the example I always yeah. use is, uh, in fact, there's two, but mm -hmm. um, there was one scene in the first issue where um, Shinji is on a train, and then we see yeah. him walk through a train station. Mm -hmm. um, in the script, initially, it was meant to be all dilapidated and run down, um, and Gary said, you know, uh, in Japan, the the running a good train service is like so, they're so uh, um, uh, not obsessed, but what's the word? They hold it in the most highest regard. Mm -hmm. If yeah. the train is like a minute late, they take an apology out in the newspaper the next day to say, sorry, the train was late. 
Mm-hmm. That's how much that care is about delivery. Yeah, they, they, yeah, they really care. So Gary was like, um, yeah, you wouldn't have a dilapidated train station. It would be kind of tidy and so mm-hmm. things like that. Um, uh, and obviously he, he's been really helpful sending us like um, film footage of streets in, in Tokyo um, to show like to help us get the vibe down and that kind of thing. Um, yeah. Yeah, that, that's really cool. I yeah. I didn't know that. That makes a lot of sense. So uh, looking at all the art and yeah, all I the different say. cultural elements in Kiltopia. Oh, definitely. yeah, and also like, we didn't want to like offend anyone by getting something culturally wrong, right? Because because I'm you know I'm not, I've never been to Tokyo. I mean I can happily admit that. I just have a real fascination with the games from Japan, which mm-hmm. is where the idea came from. So mm-hmm. for me to set something there, uh, we we were very firm on ourselves and said, look, um, no no like whitewashing, none of that kind of thing, because mm-hmm. we don't want to hack people off. Because people in Japan are are reading the book now. We're we're getting yeah. Kickstarter from Japan, so. Uh, you know, can you imagine us sending something that's complete fabrication? You know, no, I got you. Yeah, we don't want to like, do that to people. So we just Chris thought, hey, Chicken Carnoush actually talked about something very similar uh, with the Aboriginal population uh, in Australia in relation to the Resurrected, uh, which was the work he worked on. To, you know, also, giving away uh, hashtag, um, but. Yeah, it, it's something that uh, I'm glad is important to creators, uh, especially creators like you and Christian, because uh, it it definitely shows in the work that you guys are trying to have it be correct uh, in its representation, representation of the culture. And I think that's pretty important. Um, and then whitewashing is just the worst. Uh, mm-hmm. Uh, Ghost in the Shell can teach you that lesson, so it's fine. <laughs> <laughs> well, yeah, and, and that's the thing. I mean, uh, the, the 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 other thing is like the the Japanese text needs to be correct as well, right? Because the, I mean, the, the text underneath Kiltopia, the logo doesn't actually say Kiltopia because it doesn't directly translate. It actually says Killer City, which you yep. know we just thought that actually sounded like a cool tagline. So for anyone yeah. who didn't know what it says, that's what it says. Um, oh, nice little Easter eggs there for everybody. Yeah, yeah, and and you know, like we're we're continuing to do that. Kill so City, get- you heard it here first on Comics Academy. If you don't read Japanese, <laughs> <laughs> well, um, you read Japanese, and it's not a surprise. <laughs> <laughs> So, so Ga- Gary's also reading the script for issue three at the moment, and I just got a round mm-hmm. of feedback from him. Um, and not to give too much of a spoiler, but issue three is all about um, purpose. So the themes yeah. are, the themes go right. Issue one didn't really have a, a core theme because it's kind of introducing things. Mm-hmm. Issue two is about fame and how fickle fame is and how, you know, you've seen things like James Gunn getting fired off of Guardians of the Galaxy how yeah. fame is fleeting, be careful what you say because you're at the mercy of your public and your fan base. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, without uh, getting everything ready. politicians can learn from. <laughs> yeah, Anyways, exactly. that's, my, that's my little funny political thing forever. Or they, or they don't learn from it, which is actually what's happening to these days. They yeah, just never exactly. learn. Um, and issue three is all about purpose. Um, and I can't really say too much about issue three because issue two is not out yet, but... Um, a lot of it's to do with um, the theme of um, the concept of love. So the bad guy Saito is uh, in, in issue one, he runs a VR pornography company. Um, and there's a little bit in issue three where we talk about the concept of does automation and virtual reality, like emotional experiences just render the concept of love dead. Um, so there's a whole bit in there where we talk about what porn might be like in this cyberpunk messed up world we've created. Mm-hmm. And um, I came up with a concept for like the first few pages, like a sort of, it's a, basically it's an advert for porn, put it that way. Um, <laughs> that's a little exclusive for you. The first few pages are basically <laughs> advert for this like new pornographic experience. There is a, a story point to it, which I can't spoil for you. And he said, Gary just went, yeah, see in is Japan. It, is the spoiler porn? <laughs> no, no. Uh, yeah, well, G- Gary said, um, see in Japan, the, the things you've depicted in this little montage they are into much weirder stuff. You can get much <laughs> like, crazier experiences than what you've put down on this montage. And I was like, to... hey, oh, that's a real eye opener. Okay. So um, I need to get a little bit weirder with it, I think. Don't don't <laughs> click no, the links. Don't, don't, well, don't shy away from getting, getting weirder, apparently. 
Let your freak flag fly, so to speak. Yeah, that was a bit of a roundabout explain explainer there, but I had to be careful not to spoil anything because, like, um, yeah, no, it's it's all good. I want to talk all about it, but I can't. So okay, wait. So now the question, of course, is: is does it get real weird? Does it get real weird? I yeah. can I know yeah. that? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Even in issue two, weird. it gets weird. Yeah. Um, yeah. Okay. Cool. Yeah, I'm good with that. I like weird yeah, stuff. Because no, totally. right? issue one again was like table setting, right? We thought, right, we need to introduce the world and the characters, and not mm -hmm. do too much crazy stuff because that will distract, distract well, from. I, I just wanted to talk about uh, a couple of little crazy things in your your terrible dystopian society. For example, uh, these wreckers are, and I, I gotta hand it to Craig, uh, the design on these wreckers is crazy. Like, they, they look so good. And also, yeah, yeah. don't think I did not notice that Final Fantasy VII reference, all right? <laughs> all right? Because yeah, I did. <laughs> there's, there's so much floating around in there though i mean uh, like, but so yeah I was, I was just gonna say that it didn't, it, there are people literally selling their testicles for tickets to kill fest mm -hmm. which is the battle royale thing it's just like that's that's horrifying but also that, that i feel like that's something that could happen <laughs> well it, you know, we, we, the, there's a, you know, you know, at uh, comic conventions, people have the big roller banners, right? Mm -hmm. um, so our one had a quote from Derek Robertson because he did a, a, a print for issue one, right? Ah, uh, uh, Derek Robertson at Transmetropolitan. Yeah. Mm -hmm. That's it's my favorite comic series of all time. I, I need to throw it out there again. I think I say that on every podcast and video hangout. I've ever I might have noticed. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Just a little bit, right? Just a dash. His quote is, um, this feels like a, a dystopian future that's not far away. And I'm like, yeah, 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 what are you, he's not wrong, I don't think. Well, the <laughs> second that one of the records was just like, and pick up my uh, my sword as a cosplay accessory, I'm just like, Ugh. <laughs> oh, the consumerism yeah. is strong. We're close, we're close. The cosplay orgy. Very close the, to that. Yeah. If you've been to a well, few cosplay cons, you know. <laughs> you know, you know. Leto was actually, um, it's weird because a lot of people assumed that she was the main character because uh, all of the guest art was about her, but it just so happened that people gravitated towards her. Mm -hmm. um, Shinji and Leto are actually kind of equal, equal billing, star billing, you know? Yeah. Um, issue two is very much her issue. Well, I mean... It's, yeah. it's, he's on the cover, so I don't know yeah, about billing the cover, for the so. first issue at least. <laughs> well, it's, it's funny. We had a lot of a lot of reviewers saying, "Oh, we thought she, we thought Stiletto would be the main character," and I was like, "Really? Interesting." Well, you know, I, I never thought awesome. that. That's the the, well, awesome. like I definitely could see her as an antagonist, like as somebody who's trying to get in Shinji's way, but not not like I don't I don't know if she would make a good character just because I I don't know if I could root for her mm -hmm. uh, yeah, I guess uh, okay. it's very much her it remains to be seen i think once we get to killtopia 2 we get some some ideas in the next volume we'll know some more about her backstory i will say good. when she says bring it in asshole i won't bite i literally started cackling because <laughs> that is one of the funniest things i have ever read uh period <laughs> Anyways, here's another fun fact, right? Every mm -hmm. bit, every bit of dialogue in that book, and every book I've ever done, I I, I read it actually out loud multiple times. To think, mm -hmm. is this something that somebody would actually say? Does it like does it roll off the tongue in a way that feels natural and doesn't feel like it's been written? If you know what I mean, right? Yeah, yeah. not like overly written. Um, and I even even like if if I don't have my computer in front of me and I've just got mm -hmm. my phone. And I've got a good line of dialogue. I'll actually just record myself saying it and then come back to it later to, to type it. Yeah. Oh, that's neat. I, I, all those recordings are gone, I have to say. They're all deleted because they're embarrassing. <laughs> but, uh, but, but I want it. But you know, also, it's cool. just the audio book, the audio comic of you reading this, there's there's an appeal there. There's an audience for this. Come on. This is Killtopia bedtime. Do you know, story. actually, there's an arcade uh, 40 minutes from where I live in Glasgow who has invited us to later on in the year do a live reading. 
okay. uh, of the of the comic, but have different people doing different parts. So me and one creator. But there's a few logistical things we can work out. But um, we could even like live stream it somewhere. We could do something like a recording of it. So we just need to figure out what's going on. But I think that's quite a funny. I don't know. That could mm -hmm. be quite fun. And then an arcade, yeah. which is perfect, right? Because it's so. Oh, cool. well, totally. Yeah. Yeah. No, no, that sounds awesome. That sounds so exciting. Mm -hmm. I mean, so the Kickstarter is going on, and you've obviously you've you've done this whole situation before. We've got people out here. A lot of our people actually are super interested in how your process is and how you guys manage this because it's a whole lot of work. You're in round two. We've already unlocked super stretch goals. Is there anything? Those fabulous prints, by the way. Very, very amazing. Very prints. fast. <laughs> and so like well how do you guys how do you guys do this do you have a system like what's up so um i'm lucky enough that i have worked in digital marketing for five plus years um yeah. and i was a journalist before that so that's helpful so being a journalist before is helpful in knowing how to pitch your book to reviewers right because yeah. i've unfortunately it's just the nature of the job had to reject many pitches back in the day when i was an editor mm -hmm. uh, yeah. it's just it sucks. I hate doing it, but it's, it's part of the job, you know? Mm -hmm. So you kind of get into the art of um, how to very quickly get your pitch across. Yeah. yeah. As, as a journalist and as an editor receiving those pitches. So that elevator pitch, basically getting the, the selling points over really quick is kind of mm -hmm. just second nature to me now. Mm -hmm. I, in conversation, I ramble a lot, but in the written word, um, I, I think I've got it down to like a T where I can say, my comic's about this. Would you like to yeah. review it? Yeah, and these guys are busy. You know, reviewers are busy. They've got other like, if if you imagine how many Kickstarters must be getting in touch with them to say, hey, cover my, you know, so how yeah. do you stand out? Mm -hmm. And I think that philosophy extends to social media and our mm -hmm. Kickstarter page. Um, the layout of that page is is sort of an evolution of of the previous six Kickstarters we've done. Yeah, and that's the format I've used for the last three campaigns because I mm -hmm. feel it's the one that immediately hits you. Um, we sort of drill down, um, you know, the section at the top that says, if if you're interested in these things, you will like our book. And we bang off yeah. all this pop culture stuff. So like Battle Royale, Japanese cinema, uh, video games. Yeah. And those are things that people, because they don't, they, you know, if they're new to Kiltopia, they don't know who I am. They don't know who Craig is or our book. Mm -hmm. But they do know those things. They think, oh, this book's like these things that I know and I, I love. Mm -hmm. I'm going to read on. It becomes like almost like an art form and you know like people have said that um after this is done we should write a book about it the, the process and I'm, I'm warming up to the idea i just need to figure out yeah. how to fit in and amongst everything else um but yeah with the kick so with the kickstarter for issue one um we the first thing we revealed was the logo of the book that was a year before the kickstarter went live like yeah full year Mm -hmm. um because we thought hey you know like i said earlier this was like our hail mary this was our like big this needs to be the best thing we can possibly produce let's let's treat this as if we're trying to get signed yeah and, and just so we thought right we need to build a fan base so we give ourselves a gear and we work on the best art we we get the get the word out there yeah all that kind of stuff. um so i drew up a marketing plan um actually wrote it down so saying in this month we could review really? it yeah, yeah. yeah, so you had it staged out, right? Like yeah. you went, okay, I appreciate that you that you went full nerd on it um, because obviously it worked. But do you recommend doing that for for people out there? A lot of our a lot of our viewers are, are people all across comics, um, creators and you know indie creators alike. So do you recommend sitting down and being like, here's your marketing plan, let's start it out. Let's do it this way. Yeah, I mean, I, I suppose if it's your first, if it's your first um, time with Kickstarter, it, mm -hmm. it can feel really overwhelming, right? So there's a few things to think about there. It's like, um, like one of the biggest things I see people saying to me, like if they get in touch with me and say, "Hey, my Kickstarter's not doing as well as I'd like. Mm -hmm. Do you have any advice on how to turn it around?" And I'm like, uh, "Yeah, the biggest thing I su I would suggest is, you know." these are people who are sharing their kickstarter on their friends list on mm -hmm. facebook on twitter so mm -hmm. it's an echo chamber right there's only so many yeah. people on that friends list you'll mm -hmm. reach you need to start thinking beyond that so for us it was like um we made the kiltopia facebook page mm -hmm. uh, and we started running like paid adverts mm -hmm. and paid adverts is one that always comes up because people say they don't work but those people are doing them wrong there's yeah. definitely 
be harsh, but there is a wrong way to do it and a right way to do it. Mm-hmm. Uh, people There's think, a wrong way to do it, pay all the money and get, not get any results. <laughs> well, yeah, yeah, totally. And, and that's why people get frustrated. They're like, oh, I paid yeah. 10, 10 pounds and Facebook said I was going to get 10 million, you know, like uh, in my, yeah. my advert in front of 10 million people. But then what they don't realize is they've basically set up an advert and, and they've gone for like the highest number possible. They've basically said, I want to target everyone in the world who is a fan of comics. Yeah. How many people in that demographic are really going to be interested in their comic? Yeah, Pro- they're probably most of them like MCU fans or DCU fans of the films. They probably yeah. don't read comics, so we, you know, and this is through like years of like doing marketing. We're yeah, super targeted, we're targeting cyberpunk fans, Akira fans, fans of Funimation, Crunchyroll, those kind of things. Mm-hmm. Um, so yeah, to sort of like that was a, that was an aside, but to backtrack, yeah. um, yeah, I mean, they need to ask themselves like what what is it about their idea and their story that stands out. What's mm-hmm. the USP and how can you tap into fans of those things? So if your book's yeah. about, um, I don't know, fighting games, for example, if it's inspired by fighting games like Street Fighter, yeah. um, what is it about that that genre that, that you can tap into? Well, you um, heard it here. Target your people, know what you're about, and find your people, right? Yeah. And this, and, so and, that's what yeah. you did. You found your people. You exactly your people. that, right? And, and also, we, speaking of finding our people, uh, Dave, did you want to finish that thought real quick? Yeah, I mean, I mean, like, uh, so, so basically, we built up our fi- a Facebook uh, fan fan base by yeah adverts, but then also posting things like, you know, we have to be kind of creative. Don't just post like a big wall of text in a post, right? We do mm-hmm. like silly videos. We do gifts. We do like mm-hmm. um, script page um, comparisons. We do like um, time lapses of pages being drawn. Mm-hmm. Uh, but we also post stuff like, um, you know, the Akira box set that got announced, right? Yeah. Or the one that you had earlier. Um, yeah, you know, shall, shall I just lift? Yeah. lift that was this. a perfect segue. You couldn't even help yourself, could you? Like, <laughs> so, so, right? We did a post on the Killtopia page just saying, hey, yeah. it's a cool thing. Because we're fans of Akira. Right? Yeah. And, and well, not the trick, but they, I mean, you have to be sincere, right? You have to be honest about, I love Akira. That got announced. I was like, oh, that's amazing. Our fans are also in cyberpunk because they bought, bought our book. Mm-hmm. And we share, we share stuff that's not about us. And people, we've almost become like a cyberpunk kind of manga fan group now. Yeah. And we're a little kid, you know, and people get involved. And it's like, yeah, that's that's great. So I, I could I could go on and on about it. But we do have guides on our website um, mm-hmm. at Cartier Comics, if anyone mm-hmm. wants to read them. They're there. They explain in minute detail how we did the first Kiltopia campaign. Because why do I want to keep all that knowledge for myself when I can help other people? I got here because people helped me with advice. So, yeah. so that is okay. We're going to be putting that link yeah, inside uh, of the situation. I'm going to find that uh, and put yeah, it in the no, review. So our, our and and I might just make a video about that, honestly, because that <laughs> seems pretty useful to people. Um, also, uh, just quick thing, we got a couple of questions in the chat, which is super exciting. Oh my god, I'm so excited. <laughs> um, so, we have two questions from Angus. Uh, Angus wanted to know about the tiers, especially, I believe it was the Kaiju Cola Acid tier. Uh, yeah, the Acid Kaiju Cola pledge level. Uh, just like what to expect from each tier. I know you got crazy stretch goals right now. So just like what you get with, uh, just a general idea of what you get with each tier, I guess, would be helpful. Yeah, I'm just bringing up the page because Craig, Craig named them and I forget which is which. <laughs> yeah, no worries. Uh, and um, then also what, uh, Dylan wants to know, a uh, wonderful Dylan Gilbertson, creator of Sweetheart, by the way. Oh, hi, Hello, Dylan. Dylan. We miss you. I know. Um, free Jeffrey. Uh, <laughs> uh, pra- be- praise be to Jeffrey. Uh, but he wants to know when Kaiju Cola will be at the supermarket. <laughs> That's my question. So, so, uh, so are you going to be at WonderCon? That's a good question. Right. I, 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 I found a company that makes uh, corporate merchandise, and you can actually get, like, you know, crappy, like, cheap cola in a can, but mm-hmm. printed to your so we could do it. Oh. As, uh, we, we did 
sure they're doing it as a Kickstarter reward, but uh, just with like shipping, like putting pressurized pressurized cans and parcels, it's like I don't know the law the law on that. Like uh, um, I would love to do it, but maybe there's a company, maybe we can get a company in different countries to make them and ship them. You know, mm -hmm. it's something we'll look at for sure because I think it would be a perfect a perfect fit. <laughs> oh um, yeah, but, I'd I get one. I mean, <laughs> well. well Highly toxic. They're pure acid, so it's, yeah, uh, it's kind that's of, right. just it's like all soda. Just like all cola, ironically. Yeah. Um, so give me that sweet, sweet kaiju cola acid. I'm ready for it. <laughs> oh, I have a, on that note. I have um, an answer for. I think it was Angus, right? About the yeah, yeah. yeah. There's there's two tiers at the pure acid level. Um, the 160 pound one um, is basically you get everything, like literally everything, all the stretch rewards as well, plus a sketch uh, by Craig. Like whatever you want, he'll draw it. Um, I see. Uh, the one up from that two hundred, you swap the sketch out for a replica of Stiletto's gun, but they're all gone, unfortunately. Oh. Um, oh. Cosplay um, accessories. Oh, well, we might we might do more. Um, it's just that the guy that the the guy that's making them them for us is an actual prop maker for film and TV and fan fan films and stuff. Mm -hmm. So he's only got like, time to so we had to cap it at five uh, guns, mm -hmm. but. We might bring them back if there's a demand. Dude, I would love yeah, it sounds, to give one of those away. You know, it sounds I'm, like there's I'm a demand. I'm a terrible person. Let me buy that so I can give it away. Yeah, we well, should have gotten that early. But if it comes back, if it comes back, if you it know, comes, if it comes, we're going to be the first two that are interested in yeah. getting us a yeah. lot of gun. Is yeah, this a lot of whip going to be available? Because that sounds. Oh, that would be cool. Yeah. I don't. I don't. Cool. I don't fuck around with guns, but I definitely mm -hmm. could do a whip. <laughs> yeah, yeah, we could. I mean, anything's on the table, right? I mean, we're making toothbrushes, for goodness sake. Yeah. <laughs> I saw that. I saw that. That's that toothbrush amazing. stretch goal, the, the yeah. troll is real. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I, honestly, because I, did I explain, like, I don't know if you guys saw my post where I explained why yeah, we're doing I have no idea why you did that. Why did you do that? <laughs> Yeah, because on the very first campaign, right, when we unexpectedly hit our goal in like 12 hours, which is just nuts, mm -hmm. um, I basically put the campaign live, went to bed, woke up in the morning, and I was like, oh, oh. we're done. <laughs> and we, we were stressing, you know. Like, you know like, like, <laughs> but, um, so I did, a, I did a post explaining what, how stretch goals work, because uh, from past experience, a lot of people are like, how does this work? Do we need to pay more? Or, um, yeah. mm -hmm. So uh, I, I said... See, we hit this much. You might get something normal, like an, an extra print, or something random, like a toothbrush. And in brackets, it said, we're definitely not doing toothbrushes. It's just a joke. Everyone started asking us, oh, no, definitely, you need to start making them now. <laughs> Someone he printed their own one because they were impatient waiting for me to announce them. Mm -hmm. say, <laughs> and I was like, this is out of control, so definitely we have to do it now. I was going to do it for the last That's camera. amazing. Surprisingly hard to make. Um, with a logo on them and not look like crap. So yeah, yeah I, I, I can see that. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. But yeah, we've we've done it. We, it's happening. So and now mm -hmm. you could have your very own Killtopia Volume Two toothbrush, toothbrush. <laughs> for all your teeth cleaning um, needs. Hopefully, people will use that to brush their teeth and feel happy. Um, <laughs> they might need it after the cola, so there's yeah, that. And yeah. then after the so it's 15 pounds and up, right? For to get all the prints on the campaign for the stretch goals, yes, yes. I might need to double check that, but I think I think one of the tiers is 20 pounds or more. I think Frank quietly might be 20 pounds, but okay, to get the Frank, by the way, uh, I was gonna ask you how the hell you got Frank quietly, and then I saw uh his uh, book on the BHP website and just like, okay, that makes sense. Yeah. Well, yeah. I mean, um, I, I was drinking with Frank at uh, London, a London, London MCM in October. The first time I've actually met him. Um, he's great. He, he's so uh, funny. Like, I'm sure like, he you know, is. I, I can't divulge anything he said because it's, it's going to, but he can tell an anecdote, put it that way, and, and have you in stitches laughing on the floor by the end of mm -hmm. it. Um, Great guy, and uh, yeah, I'm amazed that we got him as well. Because like, while he's still on BH BHP, like obviously he's he's all booked up doing his big projects. Mm -hmm. So he had some time and was like, yeah, cool. So, well, I mean, he's awesome. freaking quietly. So I, yeah. yeah, kind of a big deal. I mean, just, mm, I just did All Star Superman. Don't worry about it, Dad. <laughs> <laughs> 
kind of dabs you into the future, you know? You're just, there we go. That's exactly what happened. Flying into the sun. <laughs> so, but now I just can't wait to see what he's going to come up with, right? It's going to yeah. be a painful, painful. Well, that's the excitement. You know, yeah, we're just yeah. kind of like quietly, just in the background, just like, yes, give us something good. Just, just give us something good. Quietly, for quietly. <laughs> the internal screaming is, yeah. is apparent. But that actually brings me to my next question. Where are we, where can we, um, the fans, the weirdos, um, see you next? Are we going to see you at any shows? Like it's calm season yeah. in the States. So where can yeah, we go? It's, uh, it's all kicked off here again as well. Um, mm -hmm. I've got no plans to make it to the States this year, unfortunately, just because uh, I'm hopefully buying the house next week. I mean, I boo, but but yay, but boo, so, um, but also yay. I'm going to be completely broke for like the next um that's long, fair long <laughs> but, uh, yeah, you know what um we know we're well acquainted with the life of our, for our dreams uh, <laughs> i totally still have money money yeah yeah money. yeah it's just, it's fine don't worry about it well yeah, you know that, that, said, that said i am i am going to apply for new york anyway just to see what happens um mm -hmm. But um, <clears throat> the best way to keep up to date with that is on just Facebook. So the mm -hmm. Killtopia one, if you just search Killtopia, you'll find us or cool. Card Shark Comics. Um, but um, so in the UK, I've got a few books. So uh, I'm at Dunfermline Comic Con here in Scotland in two yeah. weeks. Week after that is Edinburgh Comic Con, the home show, which is awesome. Mm -hmm. um, MCM in London in May. Uh, and th uh, how many more? Thought Bubble in Leeds, hopefully. Uh, sorry, in Harrogate, it's moved now. So fingers crossed for that one. They're going to announce tables soon, so I'm really hopeful because that's where we launched Kiltopia once. So it'd be really cool to be there again uh, yeah. and launch Kiltopia too there. Um, but yeah, that's all for now. There's a few sort of irons in the fire. Yeah, oh, nice. so many Paisley irons. Well. Wait, um, I'm sorry, really what? Nice. Uh, Pais Paisley Comic Con nice. um, in April. That's a nice one. That's the first time we've done that, so that's cool. Okay, uh, yeah. it's, 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 it's on Twitter. Uh, I think Craig posted it. So your Patreon yeah. needs to get us to Prague, dude. Come on. I I'm sorry. By the way, uh, I have a Patreon for Comics Academy at comicsacademy.com/slash Patreon mm -hmm. slash cop. Fuck. <laughs> okay, you that's fine. One. You got uh, one. That's one. Uh, I said <laughs> it. it. Over. I'm, over. I'm over. just saying it. No, I'm not. Um. So. <laughs> <laughs> um, so it's patreon.com slash comics academy mm -hmm. if you want to donate it literally goes towards helping with shipping uh, all the giveaway stuff and then helping me not spend all of my money on this <laughs> also sending me to Prague which is really I'm most important to Prague. It's a really <laughs> just, just for a day just, it, yeah, 20 I'll, minutes I'll, 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 take yeah, minutes. It's fine. I'll take it <laughs> um, but no, if, if we get more money in the Patreon, I'd love to go to more cons. We're going to WonderCon uh, Saturday the 30th. So. I'm very excited. It's going to be See a lot of weird. There. Yeah, a lot of weird, a lot of floating around. Um, we're sorry that we're going to miss you in the States, but happy that you're buying a house like a, an adult human. Yeah, like an adult. <laughs> Well, I'm hopefully it's not a done deal just yet, but hopefully. Okay, well, we're crossing our fingers. We're sending all the I hope you got a, a good deal. Good deal on <laughs> Thank that. You. Thank you. All right. Yes. Low um, APRs. Um, also, I have another question from Angus, actually. Uh, he was, or sorry, they, I don't want to assume gender. They were wondering if you have ever considered doing a comic book creating course where you can go from the process to the idea to writing, to lettering, and publishing. Uh, mm -hmm. that sounds really cool. I'm not sure how much work that would be. I'm sure that would be a lot of work, but it sounds like you did some of that with your promotion. So, yeah. do, do you know what actually very, it's, that's, that's a really interesting question because a, a company did actually get in touch with me. Um, I forget what they're called now, but they, they basically um, pay expert people in fields to mm -hmm. record a video course and come mm -hmm. up with like a, a graded unit and stuff. And, um, I forget what they're called now, but they actually did reach out and say, hey, would you like to do something? It wasn't comic specific, but it was like content, like yeah. writing for writing for online and stuff like that. They might do a comic one, in which case, uh, yeah, potentially. Yeah, um, that would be super I would, cool. I would definitely be down to see that. Yeah, yeah. I mean, what I would say to, to Angus is um, uh, so many people get in touch with me um, 
over Facebook, over Twitter, that I ask for advice. I, I may be slow to reply because I'm quite busy, but my inbox is always open. So, mm -hmm. you know, don't be afraid to just reach out and ask me a question, you know. Yeah. You keep those DMs yeah. open for the, for the fans? I see DMs open. I know, I know that uh, they work because that's how I met uh, Dave here. So, it's fine. Perpetually sliding into DMs. I mean, that's what um, it's about. That is literally my entire life for the last month is slipping into DMs and being like, I love you on Twitter. <laughs> that, that's 90%. Like, Dan, I'm I'm sorry. Uh, Dan, by the way, Dan, I love you, but I, I love you. That's all I have to say. I, I love your work, and I love you, and I love you, Craig, and I love you, Dave. I love everyone. I want to ask, though, I want to ask, like, you know, because I am thinking about some pairings, you know, what can, what can people ingest and digest while they're reading volume two or while they're getting hyped to receive volume two for their eyeballs? I feel um, like anything but Japanese takeout is disingenuous. You know what? You know what? I would almost say that, but you know what? This feels like this feels greasy and extra. So you need some fun there. You need a okay. little bit of extra fun. So yeah. do you mean like anything? Anything kind of in the meantime that's kind of thematically like could get them hyped up for it, right? So like, so I was thinking I, well, I can have, recommend a good Akira box. <laughs> well, I mean, <laughs> just get one that's as big as your head. Amazon will send Bigger. it to you. Um, <laughs> That's an unnecessary Amazon plug. They don't need me. Um, but so I was thinking, I was like, this reading Killtopia, actually, volume one, again, made me really want to read uh, Tokyo Ghost. Um, oh, yeah. I was like, I really am craving that sweet, sexy Tokyo Ghostness. Uh, oh, dang it. As a recommender fan, they can yeah. confirm. Yeah. So I, I had to, I had to do that. Same as we were reaching over and, and grabbing stuff. Um, yeah, I've got Tokyo Ghost here. I, I love Rick Remender's work. Like, I am yeah. such a big fan of his work. Classic, uh, beautiful, like, attractive. Uh, Thank you for, I'm sure the fans appreciate it. So I was like, it got me in, yeah. the, in the mood for that. And then I was like, okay, I've actually been listening to a lot of The Prodigy because, um, rest in peace, Keith. Um, and it made me want to listen to, uh, I've been already listening to The Fat of the Land, um, but also, um, Never outgunned. Oh man. Oh God. I'm such a fake geek girl. What do I know about anything? Um, oh, like, uh, never right. This is fake name or fake fake geek girl over here. I don't know anything about anything, guys. I'm just here to suck out your nerdness. Oh wait, no, I shouldn't have said that. That's gross. Um, <laughs> I'm a perv. Anyway, but so like what kind of musical pairings, what what do you recommend that people to get us stoked, to get us even more pumped? What do you recommend that we that we like digest, ingest visually, emotionally, musically. Yeah, yeah. So um, yeah. we actually, we actually um, are big fans of this approach. Exactly this, because on on Spotify, if you search Killtopia, we made a mixtape for issue one and issue two. Um, oh, I'm gonna and, listen to the hell out of that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, I can chuck you guys the link. So let me just. Uh, I'm gonna bring it up on my phone because I forgot exactly what's on it. Um, and the prodigy I, is the prodigy have is on. Because I am oh, a got... smart and well prepared person that is always on Spotify. Um, Killtopia number two OST, the playlist. Um, it's got 17 followers right now. Um, it's by you, but yes. Oh, some good stuff here. <laughs> yeah, Prodigy is oh. actually the first song, isn't it? <laughs> so. <laughs> <laughs> um, I knew. I just felt it. I felt it emotionally. I felt it emotionally. <laughs> I would say as well, Tokyo Ghost is a really good shout because um, th this this actually really inspired like a lot of the the themes in Killtopia. Um, and like mm -hmm. I say, I'm a big Rick Remender fan. Like his work on Low, mm -hmm. and Low Low to me is the best modern comic, uh, mm -hmm. bar none. Um, okay. It's weirdly like not a lot of people have read it that I know. Um, I, I don't know if you guys have seen it because um, um, it's kind of on a bit of a hiatus at the moment. I think it's wrapping up this year, um, mm -hmm. but it is. So good. Um, so wait, which show? Um, no. Hello, I'll show you the cover because I, I have a really oh, weird Scottish my <laughs> Yeah. Oh yeah, I love Low. Low is great. Yeah, yeah. Oh, that's there. It is. There's I that sci-fi action. I haven't action. read. I haven't read. Yeah, but Lowe, I am like. Um, I would just say, as a Rick Remender fan boy, just read everything that they've written. It's fine. Yeah. <laughs> I would say I have an intense personal bias. 
I understand that. I can I don't see that. Don't think they mind. I don't think anyone minds okay that. either. But if anybody doesn't like recommender and they don't agree with me, like it's just my opinion. So like, <laughs> sorry. <laughs> so um, I'd also say um, um, Trans Metropolitan, of course, um, yep. because Seminal. issue two is the one where we go kind of dark comedy. We have more fun with it, and it's more like anarchistic, just yeah. like Trans, right? So. Mm -hmm. um, Again, I, I don't want to spoil too much, but there's a, a really, a really crazy theme park in issue two. Mm -hmm. That's um, it gets a bit weird. Um, you'll see, you'll, you'll, see, you guys will see. It's not a kaiju cola theme park either. It's okay. Okay. On something else or someone else. Ah. Um, mm -hmm. it's getting really, really strange. All um, these sexy little spoil, um, all these little nuggets here for our, for the fans. So if you are watching and you are a fan, like you're getting some primo little hints and details. <laughs> Oh, well, I guess because Kaiju Col uh, Kaiju Cola's mascot uh, KK is in mm -hmm. it. Um, I guess anything with Mecha, so like um, Metal Gear Rising yeah. is a big a big um, influence as well because it's by yeah. Platinum Games, who are my favorite game developer. Apart from mm -hmm. apart from from software, I kind of tear. Mine Project Red, and uh, it will be until the day I die. Nice job. Uh, thank you for liking my tweet on Twitter. Uh, I died. I died of being the happiest man alive. Yeah. <laughs> you know, we actually sent them a digital copy of uh, Killtopia One for their payroll, so everyone, oh. everyone at CD Projekt Red got a free copy of it. Wait, and we really? were like, oh. we were like, hopefully they'll tweet it or something. Nah, they, they didn't. I'm oh, sure. I'm sure. Like, I'm, I'm sure, sure they enjoyed it. I'm sure that they were like, yes. I mean, you know. making Cyberpunk 2077. I would hope they enjoyed it. <laughs> oh, totally. <man. laughs> um, what else? Uh, yeah, Metal Gear Rising because it's got big robots in it. Um, uh, what about Battle yeah. Angel Alita, Mister Montu, you know? I believe. S. Oh, <laughs> uh, what? H have I seen it or or read it? Like I read it. I actually no, liked I, it a lot. I haven't actually. I haven't seen the film either because I I was just too. I, it kind of passed me by. I was just too busy to catch it. But um, I do want to see it. So I've heard actually. Oh, pretty kind of mm -hmm. mixed things, but people, people, you know, friends whose opinions I really trust say they liked it. So, if you're looking for, if you're looking for some, like you know, battling some, like mecking sexiness or something, mm -hmm. I think it's, and, and you're looking for something that's new, something you probably haven't seen before. It's a good way to get out in the theaters and do something, and also wet the palate, you know, for tantalize the. Uh, let's see, Gundam Iron Blade Orphans is a pretty good mecha anime, I would say. I, yeah, it's it's yeah. it's nice to kind of get something to to get you excited about different media to consume, and also that will put you in the mind frame, get your mind right for for diving into Killtopia Volume Two. I know mm -hmm. that when. I got into volume one. I got incredibly like, just, yeah, give me all that good stuff. Um, and I really found some, the, the bromance. Um, so awesome. The and bromance. Started, yeah. Well, you, know, you, you get that. And so you kind of like, you know, it was like, if, if happy, forgive me for saying that I am going somewhere awesome, but if happy was better and then <laughs> like a, a Terminator Two curve to it of amazingness, you know. Like, um, if if Arnold was smarter in Terminator Two and Chappie was better, there you go. Um, yeah, so, like I, I, like I, I, I say this with absolute confidence. You wrote Chappie better. <laughs> oh God. <laughs> <laughs> you on your book. There you go. You wrote Chappie better. Dave Cook do wrote Chappie better. Do not come for Neil Blomkamp. Have you heard of Oat Studios? Oat Studios is killing it with brand new body horror and horror and post-apocalyptic awesomeness. I don't. I don't not like Chappie. I'm just saying that Dave wrote it better. <laughs> There's a difference. <laughs> I'm, got, I'm still gonna fight you on it, but you know what? There's, I'm still the, and I'm not saying that necessarily the Chappie is the greatest, but I'm here. I'm a huge Neil Blomkamp stan, and I think he uh, should have done Alien, and that's gonna be that. That's, that's fair. Uh, I will give you that. He should have done Alien. Oh, um, so like two, two quick questions, uh, Dave, just real quick from chat. So Toxic Soup wants to know what kind of like music or stuff you listen to in the background or just like shows you watch when you write, uh, what helps you write. And then also, 
because uh, we only did, did you guys want to go until one? Is that right? Yeah, we'll, we'll close out at okay. one. Cool. Um, and then, so why are you talk about that? And I'll uh, find the other question real quick. Yeah, sure. So I, weirdly, I, I when I'm writing, I have to listen to music. I just have to to get into the zone. Um, and most of the time, it's like metal, and probably the more brave the better. So mm-hmm. the more the kind of the kind of metal you think would be hard to concentrate to, I really concentrate to. So mm-hmm. we're talking about like Dillinger Escape Plan, um, Norma Jean, Every Time I Die, Deftones, um, mm-hmm. Architects. Uh, yeah, so like just loud, angry. Kind of music gets me into that sort of like charged up kind of punky kind of vibe. Yeah. Um, gets the ideas going. Uh, we also I also listen to the the one and two mixtapes we we did on Spotify because those are to be honest the songs that re- I really got into when I was writing each one and, and got the sort of vibe across. Yeah. Um, but my mm-hmm. thing of choice is is metal mostly. Yeah. Awesome. Yeah. And the, sorry, what? Oh, no, no. It's like creating a playlist for your writing, just for all the the writers out there or the aspiring comics writers. Creating a playlist for your work really, really helps you get into the head of your characters. Um, When I wrote Nightmare, I I made a playlist for that. And I also had mini playlists for each of the characters because I'm a crazy person. Also, it was helping me distract from actually writing Yeah, um, because I need a lot of that. Um, so definitely also, and I'm just going to do a quick plug for that playlist again. So don't mind me, Killtopia. On yeah, Spotify. the Killtopia playlist. Number two, OST, get out there. Uh, and then the other one was, I believe, from Angus, if I'm not mistaken. Yeah, uh, Angus wants to know if there are any current Kickstarters that you want to shout out. Uh, because the, Ooh, everybody crazy. wants to know about good comics. By the way, Angus, you're the best. Mr. Montu, you're the best. Toxic Soup, Dylan Gilbertson, I, I love you all. You, mm, you, sweet muffin. Z Next 74, you, come back. Mm-hmm. You're wonderful. Ask more questions. I like the way this conversation went a lot. So, yeah. <laughs> So tell us what's uh um I'm just looking at all the ones I batched recently and they're all mm. by my friends and they've all ended now. <laughs> um, <laughs> so um, my friend Matt I like called uh, called Frank on the Frank at home on the farm. I was just about to yeah. talk about that one too. Got yeah. the 19 page preview from Jordan. Really cool. Yeah, yeah. Um, so we actually did a signal boost on that one today on the on our Kickstarter. Um, Very nice. Um, we we do that a lot. Again, it's one of these things where it's like, you know, I've been that guy who's said to people, hey, can you give me a shout out, please? So yeah. that's why we, we do it, love. right? Yeah, yeah, definitely. I got a small list real quick. I'll just run past it that are currently on Kickstarter or Indiegogo. Uh, so Beastlands by Curtis. I'm sorry, I don't remember your last name right now. Curtis, uh, he worked at Scout Comics, I believe. Mm. Um, Magia. Uh, M-A-G-A-I-E-A. I'm really sorry if I didn't say that's Guy Karate. Uh, Until Observed, Shelby Black, looking at you, Instagram girl. Uh, Daughter of Titan, Old Man, The Devil Within, Raven Nevermore, Astrobiology, Long Harbor, Apex Hunter, The Baboon. Hey, Jamie. Uh, He was on the show last week. Uh, Oh, God, that was like two days ago. Never mind. Oh no, I've got and then White Ash from Charlie Stickney. Look at you, Charlie. Uh, and there's gonna be some really exci- exciting giveaways this weekend for that. So I I gotta I gotta do some shouts too. Um obviously your list is very attractive and delicious. Um so I'm there for it. But I'm gonna give a shout out to Baby Badass. Um yeah. amazing sci-fi grindhouse super action. If that's what you're into, get in there. Strange tales. Um, Erica Schultz, uh, Space Lock. Yes. What more do you need? Um, and monsters and other magical beings, um, which just looks really beautiful and sweet. And I love monsters. I think if you know me, you know that I am a spoopy bitch. I'm like, oh. <laughs> <laughs> God, I, I make the rules and I get I can't follow it. It's um, fine. It's, um, y- y- everybody gets one, as Spider-Man says. I know, God, I'm the worst. Anyway, 
Um, <laughs> but we did it. That's what we did. And YouTube will come for me. It's all right. Um, <sighs> the DMCA's. <laughs> <laughs> they come for me. That's them knocking at the door. Um, but so <laughs> like, amazing, amazing Kickstarters to shout. Um, a lot of really great Kickstarters that are that are fully funded but still going on. So. Um, we're, we always post about them. So follow us on mm -hmm. Twitter to get all the sweet, sexy news about your Kickstarter. Oh, so Miles Grab after the gold rush. Okay. Now I'm done. Okay. Um, now we're going to close it out and we're just going to, you know, we're going to just feel a vibe, feel emotion. Um, what actually, I'm feeling no. it, Mr. Krabs, Mr. No. What is your, are you feeling it now, Mr. Krabs? No. Yeah. Anyways. No, control yourself. Um, I think what we're gonna ask is, what's your, what are your top five favorite action movies? Nineties action movies. Oh, oh god, ninety! Don't just relegate it to the nineties. Okay, well, fine. The fine. Well. Oh, oh, okay. Okay. No, it's the just 80s, action 90s. movies. You got action movies. I, I veto this, this nineties bullshit. Excuse me, I love the. <laughs> Sorry, I said, I said it. I said it. it it needed to be said. <laughs> can, can I do a little plug? Actually, this is actually yeah. relevant. I, 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 for fun, when I'm not feeling comics, and I need, I want because I love to write, right? But sometimes I don't want to write comics. I'm sick of them. Sometimes, yeah. um, you know, as all creative people do get like that. Hey, um, I, the, the, I, I do uh, uh, action movie review blog for fun. That I don't oh, really promote cool. it that much. But if anyone wants to, it's basically straight to DVD really purposely terrible movies and some okay. of the good ones as well. Oh, my body is ready. Oh, wow. So it's, it's, called, it's called The Hip Fire. Um, the Hip Fire. So, you know, All right. From the hip. So it's called The Hip Fire. Um, I maybe do like one or two reviews a month. Again, mm -hmm. it's just when I feel like I need a, a distraction. Yeah. So mm -hmm. check it out there. Um, yeah, I've reviewed some terrible movies on there. Um, so yeah, cool. top, top five. Um, number one uh, is Die Hard. It's the best thank you it's a christmas number movie two, number Next. two is the raid um okay. yeah raid definitely great, so, um, a great korean uh action movie yeah right? well uh, malaysian 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 oh okay my bad yeah malaysian but done by a welsh director his wife oh. is malaysian so he moved over there with her um and mm -hmm. then found Iku Owais, who does the sila martial arts style and thought mm -hmm. That's a style I've never seen on film before. Do you want to team up and make a little movie? And then the raid happens. And then it's like, whoa, like he's amazing. Anyway, uh, yeah. so Die Hard, the raid, uh, Mad Max Fury Road is just, a, yeah, you will never see a film that's like ever again because George Miller, Miller is a maniac. Um, yeah, and uh, the editor on that film was just spicy. You know, it's, it's, <laughs> the amount of people who almost died filming that movie is just, yeah, yeah also bad. Insane. It's, it's a crazy town movie. It's a, it's a great thing to watch. Oh no! Uh, uh, things to watch while you're reading. <laughs> well, um, okay. here's another exclusive for you, right? Number four would be Commando by Arnold Schwarzenegger. Um, you, know, a life oh. you know what? I, I would say controversial Arnold pick, but I'm here for it. Oh, it's, it's um, all the way is my favorite Arnold Schwarzenegger movie. So there. <laughs> <laughs> so the exclusive is a joke, uh, by the way. There's a line from Commando in Kiltopia 2. Yeah. And it's not oh. a reference. It's an over this is from Commando. So <laughs> it's, it's nice. awesome. flashing lights. Okay. You can't miss it. Uh then number five. Oh god. Um what would number five be? Uh, uh, John Wick, um, the practicality, uh, and the, yes, good. Physical, yeah. the physical effort and choreography and filmmaking skill yeah, in that movie yeah. doesn't happen anymore because it's all CGI and quick cuts and shaky cam. And I hate yeah. that. It makes me feel sick. Um, no, no, so yeah, that is, John Wick. no, definitely, definitely. Some really, really solid picks. And also, I think our people got to, got to know you a little bit better. <laughs> they're, they're, I'm sure they're at home or at work yelling at their screens and participating in this conversation with their favorite pick. How dare you pick Commando? Commando? It's but amazing. what about True Lies? You know? Uh, um, well, what about True Lies, Dave? Oh, it's great. Um, the, 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 the scene when he's uh, uh, drugged up on the truth serum. 
and yeah. the guy's interrogating him and he's like do you remember my handcuffs he's like yes i picked them and the look <laughs> of terror on the guy's face he's about to get killed is just so yeah. funny um that's a great film yeah. uh, uh, the look of pure terror on arnold schwarzenegger's face uh in kindergarten cop really just got me going <laughs> honestly honestly a truly a horror movie an just, underrated horror classic I'm just gonna keep dragging arnold schwarzenegger's name through the mud it's uh, fine don't worry about it <laughs> You know, Dave, thank you so much for hanging out yeah. with us today. Like, I hope you enjoyed hanging out with us. Uh, yeah, absolutely. Uh, absolutely. Yeah. Everybody in the chat, thank you. Everybody on Twitter, thank you. We reached 500 subscribers, yeah. or 500 followers. It's insane. Yeah. Uh, and then we're over 50 subs on YouTube. Mm -hmm. So thank you guys for that. And then we're almost at 200 on Instagram, too. So, like... That's crazy. No, sorry, that that's 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 awesome. Like, I'm I'm super glad that Dave got to be on the show and that we we're gonna be doing more of these shows. So many, so many shows. Yeah. Um, and I, Dave, of course, you're welcome back anytime. Yeah, I, I love that, guys. Thank you. It's been a proper blast. Yeah. With shows like this, it's always the best when there's no script. Yeah. Yeah, it's just it's just like this it's no it's we're so just hanging out having a good time okay yeah, we're not yeah, trying to... creators club yeah uh, it's a it's a good hangout time right so yeah, okay so i wanted to say we are um thank you so much dave for coming out um i if you have not already backed hilltopia volume two there's probably a little something here it's worth it rearrange your life schedule i mean you there's toothbrush we talked about a toothbrush god damn it um so <laughs> do it for your body for your soul and back it's on kickstarter we'll have some links also we're going to have some links to all of these like especially this like Seriously, it's like seven DVD, it's more than 20 pounds action blog um and and thank you again so much for for hanging out with us again, Dave Cook. You're the best. You follow him in the hell. Uh, <laughs> and uh, have a great night, afternoon, day. Uh, eight o'clock at night. So I know, I know. Uh. <laughs> I was fine. I I I, I, I also <laughs> think I stay up way too late. Way too late. <laughs> <laughs> it's all good. All right. Thanks again. Right. Uh, this has been Comics Academy with Comics Creator Club, and we'll see you again very soon.